Welcome to the Babylon Green Gathering. Uh, we're very excited to have a special speaker today, Pat Friedman, who will be talking about the Trump at Jones Beach project, the, some concerns with the project. We also have a special um, event happening first, and that is that Jim Brown came all the way from Nassau as well to read a poem by Max Wheat, who's the poet laureate of Nassau and cared so much about this issue that he sent a poem over for us to read. So Jim, would you like to come to the microphone? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, uh, Max uh, sent me this poem by email today. It's, uh, I hope I can do it somewhat uh, some justice. Uh, he's very much uh, opposed to this Trump uh, development as well. He's written a poem. And uh, he's asked also that, uh, you know, once you hear the poem, I have some copies, I'll give them out t uh, tonight, that if you have any suggestions to him, he's, it's like a, it's, it's a work in progress and he wants your opinions uh, and you know anything that you could add to the poem. Yes. But as I say, I just got this this morning by email, so I'll try to give it a good reading if I can. Trump on the Ocean. Like a gift from God, Bernadette Castro, Commissioner, New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. What Robert Moses, political and Park Titan could have claimed in 1929 opening Jones Beach State Park for millions of mothers, fathers, children, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, granddads, coming from Freeport, from Farmingdale, from Oyster Bay, coming from Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx. Art Deco style cast stone planters, garbage can covers, raised scene copper roof, a pitch putt booth, ship's capstan fountain, slate mosaics, curved steps to the beach. Today, Jones Beach State Park remains one of the greatest achievements in 20th century public works construction. What would have been Robert Moses' expletives gazing upward, Trump on the ocean? Thank you very much for that, that was wonderful. And, um, I also wanted to do a quick plug for what's going on electorally. So um, the presidential is coming up, and the Green Party is going to be having its convention in July in Chicago. And we have four potential candidates, and that's Cynthia McKinney, Kent Mesplay, Kat Swift, and Jesse Johnson. So just like the Republicans and Democrats have their presumptive nominee, I would say we have someone who has a lot of delegates and is looking pretty good, and that's Cynthia McKinney, but it's not official yet. Um, also, if you're interested in more information about the Green Party, you could go to www.gpsuffolk.org. And now I'm going to introduce our special guest, and that is Pat Friedman. And um, Pat, if you can read, I want to do a grand introduction for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least I want to I'm tell people. At least I want to tell people that Pat Friedman has run for office as a Green. That's a wonderful and great thing to do. And, um, I heard that she ran county for. Legislature. There you go, Nassau County Legislature. Um, and also, Pat Friedman is a civic activist who's been a um, long time in lots of different groups. One of the groups was We the People, and um, another one is the Nassau County Nonpartisan Tax Revolt Coalition. So, um, without further ado, I'd introduce to you Pat Friedman. My name is Pat Friedman. I'm a civic activist in my community, in the town, in the county, in the state, and even in Washington for 47 years. Volunteer, out there fighting for us, the people, future generations. Uh, more and more is becoming necessary for you people out there to come forward and join with us. The most recent thing that we are going after, and you may have heard, is Trump on the ocean. We don't want to give up our Jones Beach Historical State Park. Uh, it's not a political matter. I, my organization is a nonpartisan tax revolt coalition, which I founded and share. Uh, I'm my community civic association was founded in 1929. I'm with the 47. Uh, we do want to have this Jones Beach project, the Trump on the Ocean, as it's known today, fully investigated. Letters have been sent to the governor and to the attorney general by me and my attorney, and that's over a month ago. We have not even had the courtesy of a response talking about improprieties that should be fully investigated. Personally, however, I feel the 
that the whole matter should be investigated by the federal government. I don't believe the police can police themselves. The, sta uh, the state can police themselves. If we allow this to go on this way, we will have we won't have any state historical parks. It'll be all taken over for commercialization, and we will see Jones Beach looking like Atlantic City in a short period of time. You want to talk a little bit about the first hearing up in Westchester? Yeah, let me try to give a quick synopsis of that. Even to the notice of that hearing, uh, it was short notice. Uh, the Wednesday before the Tuesday hearing, not even a week. It was noticed to Newsday. If Newsday didn't have it, nobody would even know about it. I learned the Friday before that Tuesday, December 11th. When I get up there to Westchester, 70 miles up, almost into Connecticut, 9 o'clock in the morning, there's only three people there from Nassau County. That's how little the people knew, nor could they possibly attend. Most people on a Tuesday morning, they're working. They can't take time to go up to Westchester. Uh, they lost the opportunity to get a variance, primarily because they were introducing new material. And the way an application is handled, when you file an application for a variance, and this variance was for a basement, in a floodplain. When you file that application, you need to file any documents, any site plans, any information as pertinent to the granting of a variance. Um, I had asked at that point in time for it to be adjourned and to be moved to Nassau County so that Nassau, Suffolk, and even the city people would have an opportunity to come and hear what was being proposed and question and show whether they were in objection or in favor of uh, uh, an application and for uh, Trump on the Ocean to be uh, developed. Uh, I had to move in su uh, Supreme Court in Nassau County for them to move the hearing to Nassau County. And because of the outcry of people uh, wanting the hearing on Long Island, we want much pressure put on that the state and the Parks Department on their own moved the hearing to the cradle of aviation early March. Uh, at that time, there was over 500 people, and I say over 500 because the room was filled and people were turned away. Hard to tell how many hundreds of people may have been turned away that day. My attorney, Ron Rosenberg, did a fabulous job of showing that the applicant, Donald Trump, could not meet any criteria necessary to have a basement approved in the floodplain. There must have been about 25 criteria that he could not comply with in order to get that approved. So again, they were denied in Cradle of Aviation. It's uh, back in the courts again, trying to overturn the denial of that variance. Um, my attorney was in court, and only last week, uh, trying to be intravenous that we could have something to say in opposition to the reversal of the denial. And from what I understand, the judge is leaning toward us being giving us the permission to intervene. It's interesting to note that the judge was on this case before last week. We had to go in and ask him to recuse himself. And he did. So we now have a new judge that's hearing the case, and he's leaning towards allowing us to intervene, which means we will be filing papers to uh, support the denial of the variance. And what would you like people to do right now? Well, we have written to uh, the governor, when I say we, my attorney and I have written to the governor, the new governor, and the attorney general, asking them to fully investigate this whole matter from the very, very, very beginning all the way on through. That was the end of April, I believe April 28th. We have not even received the courtesy of a uh, response by attorney, nor I. Uh, we think professionally they should have at least responded to an attorney. So I am organizing now a protest rally in front of the Attorney General's office, 200 Old Country Road in Mineola on the 19th of June. Uh, I believe that's going to be at 11 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully that people who are working can take their lunch hour early and come out. Uh, will last probably approximately one hour. But what's very, very important is I can and could not have done what we've done so far if it weren't for people coming out and showing what their intentions are, what it is they want to support, and be there and help me to get this thing in the, uh, uh, in the, in the governor's office to investigate. And maybe even go beyond that in the near future to the federal government and have them investigate it because the state cannot police themselves. If people can't make it to that rally, uh, send letters. Send letters to who? To the governor and to the attorney general.
and ask the Governor Attorney General to do what? Uh, form a committee to investigate what went on with this bidding process. Why was it done so secretively? Why wasn't it so open and known that people could, who might have been interested in a new, because we were in favor of a new boardwalk restaurant, not a Taj Mahal, a catering for 2000, and a nightclub, and uh, themed souvenirs. We're not, we are not in favor of commercializing Jones Beach, but we are in favor of what we had, the old boardwalk restaurant. We would even entertain slightly larger, two and a half times the size of the old. We would even entertain that. We do need a new boardwalk restaurant, affordable to everyone, not $500 a place. So I've had some very interesting experiences, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm determined to keep on doing it. And as far as I'm concerned, Trump better go back to Scotland or somewhere else. Oh, he was just in Florida. He was turned down. He's got a bad, bad record lately. But I need people. If we're going to have a protest, we need to shake up the governor and the attorney general. That's our next move. How about some questions? Thank you. How are you doing? As a matter of fact, Channel 12 was interviewing me and Stephen Call 5 o'clock in the morning at Jones Beach at the trailer. The trailer they set up for bookings. I got down there before 5. Oh, it was cold, windy, terrible. The sun hadn't even come up. And 12, Channel 12 people camera, they were in the trailer. So I just went into the trailer, they had Cecil on both sides. I quietly just sat down. They said, well, I'm in Trump's trailer. I know that. So I just sat down. Some, I want to call them goons, came out, dressed in suits and ties at that hour in the morning. And they said, really, I think you should go in the back and speak to Stephen Call. That was before the offer was made to my attorney. And I said, I didn't come here to speak to Stephen Call. I came here to meet with Channel 12 and to be interviewed. I'm not going in the back to speak to Stephen Call. So, short time later, they came up again, second time. I really think you should go in the back and speak to Steve, now they're getting stronger. I said, no, I really think I'm not going in the back to speak to anybody. I'm not here to speak to Stephen Call. I was invited by Channel 12. Now they're going to lay heavy on me. This is Trump's trailer. I said, really? I know that. So excuse me, I'm inviting myself to go outside. Then I got a hold of Channel 12 and I said, look, you want to interview me? You got to do it outside. I will not go back into that trailer. I called the producer over here in the main office of Channel 12, told him what was going on. They had to take all the equipment, interview me, go in to interview him. And we did this, it was an hour and a half. They, oh, they worked hard that morning, at that hour, five o'clock in the morning. They had, they had to come out to interview me for my segment, then go back in to interview them for their segment. I will say this though, which is very important. If I was approached by Stephen Call that he would work out a new boardwalk restaurant along the lines of what he proposed, I'd be more than willing to work it out that it's affordable for us. Not just for the elite of the elitist, a country club, our historical state park, for Donald Trump and his East End people that he thinks are going to come in here at $500 a plate. But we, we need a new boardwalk restaurant. It was nice when we had a boardwalk restaurant. It wasn't very well run. But if we could do something about a new boardwalk, I'd be the first one to put my efforts into it to make sure it's done and it's done right, but on a scale of like the 47,000 square feet, which is 1,000 to 1,200 seats. Yes. Uh, at the beginning, you said that he wouldn't be paying property tax on that. Can you explain that a little to me? How he would have that big, huge property and not pay tax on The it? state has the authority, I guess you'd call it, that they can have it property tax free. When the other boardwalk restaurant was there, they didn't pay property tax either. Whether that's fair or not is a separate issue. I don't think it's fair because by their own admission, they expected to make $90 million over the course of it was a 40 year lease. 90 million dollars, but that wasn't enough for him. He wanted to make more. But no, they, no matter who, you go there and you get it, you're not gonna pay property taxes. Is it right? I don't think so. <laughs> not with the way things are going. Uh, however, I differ than Harvey Levinson. And I told Harvey this, because Harvey was fighting for property taxes, but only for one to one to a fire department. I said, wait a minute, Harvey, that is a state park. Everyone in the state of New York, if any money is coming from that, it belongs to every resident taxpayer in the state of New York. Not just one to, it's not a one to a state park. It's a New York state park. So it doesn't go just to one to and one to a fire department. It goes to the state fire departments and the, the state taxpayers. 
So I would fight that if Harvey tried to push it, but he's not saying, <laughs> I think Harvey doesn't want to take me on. I, he's not saying it too much any longer. Yes. Uh, Pat, I want to thank you for, you know, for leading like a, a real large coalition fighting this thing. A lot of groups, you know. Yes. Out thank God they all came out. Yes. And it's, and it's really good that uh, you know what's what's happened so far. I, I just want to know. It seems you said that it seems quiet now, it, but I guess you you sent these letters off. I was wanting to go into a little more detail. I, I just want to mention something that you mentioned that right now. It does seem quiet. However, I heard only today. My lawyers filed with the new judge that was replaced after uh, Austin recused himself, filed papers for me with my tactical coalition and the community league to intervene in the court because they are still entertaining to see to overturn the denial of the variance, and this one was the cradle of aviation, they had to file an Article 78. That's in the court. My attorney filed papers to have us, in my side, us, I'm going to say it, me, it's all of us, intervene. The judge is leaning towards allowing us to intervene, which tells us, hey, maybe we've got a judge that's starting to listen, or maybe you're starting to get a little bit nervous or something. I, I'm not sure. I, I'll take it. I'll take it. No matter what, I'll take it. But I'll get back to your question now. In other words, uh, if you go over again, the letters that you've sent off, uh, I guess um, you've got no response. Correct. And, and you're calling for a, a demonstration. Protest, right. Yeah. Can you say what exactly the letters um, have it included exactly? What would they? Uh, I have the letters, I believe, right here with me. Let me see if I do. I believe I have mine from my attorneys. This was for the judge to recuse himself. And I'll read you. Let me see how long it is, because I don't want to bore you with this either, but it's long. Uh, a page and a half. This was written on April 28th. I was wondering about the date myself, because I felt it must have been about five weeks. Uh, this is to uh, Cuomo and the Attorney General, and it went by fax and Federal Express priority overnight. They had to get in a hurry, because they had to answer us, right? Yep. Sure. Um, vote to Cuomo and uh, Patterson. Honorable Sirs, I am a resident of Nassau County and the president of two civic associations, and my copy is cut off, but I think it means representing the interest of many Long Islanders for 47 years. I am writing to request that you investigate what appears to be highly questionable and potentially improper conduct at the highest, and that word might be level, regarding, regarding to the Trump on the Ocean project for Jones Beach State Park, in parentheses and quotes Trump. My, and I'm cut off of a word here. I gotta get another copy, this is not good. I have sent you a letter on the same date which details what I believe to be numerous improprieties relating to this project. Most significantly, however, is the fact that shortly, shortly, and I'm missing a word, Trump sued the state of New York in and around March 20th of 2008, which conceded something about change of political players in Albany due to the resignation of Governor Spitzer. Something I learned, deal is in the works which could give Trump the right to build a substantially larger structure than contemplated by the original RFP or permitted by the lease. Indeed, upon information and belief, the structure will far exceed the plans approved by the Parks Department in footprint height, thereby giving Trump an even better deal than it had before. Sorry about the missing word. Let's get a bit of copy. Prior to these recent developments, the state consistently took the position that I was limited in f that I that doesn't make sense. Oh, Trump. Maybe it's a T. Trump was limited in footprint and height in order to maintain scale and size appropriate to its height at a public hearing held on March 4th, 2008. Even though Trump sued the state thereafter. Meritless actions in and around March 20, 2008, the state moved to dismiss the claims, the word missing, uh, that the claims had no merit. Further upon receiving proposed plans from Trump on the Trump LLC, proposing a substantially larger single-story building 
of 81,200 square feet and or a two-story structure, 42 feet in height, plus four additional feet for equipment, the state by letter dated April whatever, 2008, flatly rejected the plans and reiterated that the building's footprint could not exceed, uh, the height could not exceed 22 feet or 28 feet with screened equipment. Recently, I began hearing rumors that the state was willing to make a deal, and Austin, that's why I went after Austin, he came out in the paper saying he wanted to broker a deal. I said, how can a Supreme Court justice broker an illegal deal? This whole project is illegal at this point. So that's why I went after Austin to make a deal, and Trump to substantially expand the footprint and or height of the building. This deal to be a direct result of the recent changes in Albany, which have direct ties to Nassau County political leaders. Nassau County Executive Tom Swasey has indicated in the past that he favor, his favor of having Trump on the ocean built. By the way, Kate Murray is also in favor. His former chief aide, William Cunningham, recently appointed as an aide to Governor Patterson. Moreover, Mr. Swasey's father and Governor Patterson's father are longtime friends and even partners in the same law firm. New close relationship between the Nassau County leader and Albany occurred in March. Shortly thereafter, I hear rumors that the state is suddenly willing to make a deal, in quotes, with, to settle the pending lawsuit. There is no, I'm, I look at the, when I sit down, if I have another copy of this, if somebody wants to see it, that doesn't have the missing words. There is no legal need to reach a settlement with Trump on the Ocean, LCC, inasmuch as the lawsuits filed by it have no merit. The fact is Trump already has a deal, and at least the terms must be enforced. Trump can build what it originally proposed, a 46,000 square foot structure, and make plenty of money. Indeed, according to their financial projections, they can make $90 million in profits on a 46,000 square foot building. There is no need for a larger building, expanded footprint, or a higher building other than Trump's need for more money. The people of the state of New York look to you, our elected officials, to safeguard, protect, and defend our rights. Jones Beach State Park is a natural a national and state historic site should be subject to minimal commercialization. The state has a duty to enforce the term of the lease it has with the leasee, Trump on the Ocean, LLC, and the design and building limitations ha has imposed. We cannot allow political favoritism and cronyism to corrupt a historic state park. Mr. Cuomo, as chief legal officer for the state of New York, I implore you to investigate this matter and ensure that the laws of our state and the terms of the lease are fully enforced, as written. The uh, golf course is going to be taken for parking, oceanfront parking. Most of Field 5 would be taken if he gets away with going forward. Yes. And if you can imagine these poor people engaging a bar mitzvah or a wedding, $500 a plate, and on a hot summer day, their guests can't even get there because of the traffic. Look how difficult it is now for us to get to the beach on a beautiful day. By 10 o'clock, if you're not there, you're already in trouble. So if you have an afternoon wedding or an evening wedding, uh, the, the traffic. Well, the, other, the other part of it that came out loud and clear at the hearings is emergency services have difficulty in making sure that they can uh, handle all emergency situations. That too, and where the people that live here, where the people that would be suffering, from the lack of being safe by going maybe to the beach one day. The other thing that I was thinking of today, uh, with the economy the way it is, and the price of gasoline and so forth, even more people than usual will be going to Jones Beach because they can't afford to go on a vacation. They can't go on to Queen Mary. They, uh, they're lucky if they have the gas to get to Jones Beach. So even more so, the people from the city lines, the people that you know come out and will try to use maybe public transportation, buses, uh, I think even more so that would be used because it would be cheaper to get on a bus than to use gasoline to come out of Jones. My, my feeling on that from my looking into things, uh, I think Bernadette Castro thought she was doing a good thing. I'd like to believe that anyhow, that she meant to do a good thing. Uh, when she got no bids, she fell flat on her face. I think she knew Stephen Call. I think she went to Stephen Call. You gotta help me out got to give me a bid. And as much in the beginning as I didn't like Stephen Call and his proposal, I really do begin to believe that he wasn't well as bad. When, once Trump came in, we saw what bad really was. Uh, that he came in, put a new boardwalk restaurant, 
two and a half times the size of the original one, which we could have paid back a little bit maybe and gotten a new boardwalk restaurant. But since he needed the finances of Trump, he had to dance the tune of Donald Trump. So the real culprit to me was Donald Trump. And I questioned over and over, how does Donald Trump sign a contract in June of 06 when the bidding was closed like May 17th of 04? How can he sign it? He never bid. He never came forward. So how does he have the right to even sign the contract and then change it from the 47,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet with a basement? There's some serious things that need to be looked at with this. Uh, what kind of organizing work you did in order to prepare for that, to get people out, to I convince the board? I probably was making 50 phone calls every night. And uh, thank God, uh, every time I made a phone call, someone would recommend somebody else or another group. That's how I heard about Jim. Uh, there were different people who, to be quite honest with you, I the only people I've ever heard that's in favor of Trump on the ocean was Tom Swasey, Kate Murray, and Donald Trump and Stephen Cole. Those are the only ones. The public, the general public out there, they're outraged. And they're just delighted that somebody's taking him on. That they feel, you know, well, I'll take him on, maybe I, I won't win, but at least we're going to do everything we can to see that he doesn't win. Uh, never realizing that maybe we lucked out a little bit, that they were giving new material up in Westchester, which they couldn't. Um, the a Cradle of Aviation and three new panel members going on, what that meant and the significance we may never know. But could it be that they were starting to get a little bit jumpy because they might have had some liability? Uh, I think everybody's watching very carefully now. I don't think they're, they're barging forward uh, too quickly on anything. But we got to be ready and um, there may come a time when we're going to have to raise some funds, you know, for whatever we have to do. If we do, then we'll do it. We'll do whatever is needed to be done for whatever happens to us in the future. This is not the end. It's only the beginning. As I said, if Trump can get a step forward, my belief is a hotel with a casino. And he will commercialize Jones Beach like Atlantic City. That's where he was intending to go. He was turned down in Scotland. He was turned down in Florida and somewhere else. I'm not sure where the third place was. But he was trying to do the same things in those those locations. If they control the governor and the elected officials, believe me, you blink your eye and you'll have it. Because they can do anything they damn well please as long as they can get the legislation. I know. I, so I think if he was going to go smaller, he would have done that. Every time he's changed it, he didn't make it smaller. He just went in a different direction, down, up, sideways. No, he wants what he wants, and he doesn't want anybody to stand in his way. He requested in Westchester, uh, while his side was talking, they brought up the need for flood insurance and said since the state is self-insured, they wanted, if Trump on the ocean was to go forward, to have the state cover their flood insurance. Who is the state? Us. I mean, so much so that the state, would my lawyer put in for us to intervene? in this, uh, the, the reversing this decision, in denial, um, the state lawyers filed papers against us. Why would the state file papers against me and my groups? Why? Who were they representing? 